So welcome everybody. My name is Mary Hyatt and if this is your first time joining me, welcome. I am so grateful to have you and also if you are with me every single week on here, also super grateful to have you. So good to see all of you. It was so fun to hang out in the, the pre-show 10 minutes early. So if you're just hopping on next time, get on a little early. It's kind of a fun, casual conversation. But I wanna take a moment and introduce myself for those of you who maybe don't know who the heck I am. So like I said, my name is Mary and I am a life coach, an entrepreneur, and a presidential diamond with doTERRA essential oils, which means I get to help educate women from a beautiful, holistic place how to really take care of themselves, of their bodies, and my whole vision and just joy out of life is to help women wake up to begin to find their voice and to become fully alive. And so every single week we are really getting into the issues that women face on a daily basis, whether that's about your body, whether that is about working towards accomplishing your goals, whether that's feeling your feelings, you know, we really get into it. I am a, an incredibly honest person and you will get to know me, I think more every, every single week. And I am not afraid to be vulnerable and authentic. So this is a really safe space for anyone to begin to explore who they really are and how to feel better uh, about themselves and really enjoy Life. So I'm super excited that you here are here and let's start the show. All right, so today we are talking about hatred towards ourselves, towards our bodies, and how that all ends up getting pointed towards us all the time like it's just amazing to me uh how how deep this hatred runs i am um running a group of women right now so i'm creating a course which is all about making peace with the mirror quieting that inner bully and really loving your body again and so as i'm creating this course for me, I decided that I need to get a group of women together to help me understand really what they're facing. Um, and it's all centered around the body. It's all centered around this journey of coming from a place of hating your body to a place of really loving and accepting it. And it was fascinating to me to hear the stories of all of these women. I have my own journey, um, which you can read on my website, but I have my own journey of coming from a place of absolute intense body hatred where I looked at myself, I can remember these moments of looking at myself with total disgust, where I would look in the mirror and I would just go through and pick apart every single piece of my body. I hate this, that's too big, that's not tight enough. Cellulite, fat, whatever it was, I literally hated myself so much that I went years without ever being naked in front of ever anybody, never allowing myself to see my own body in a mirror, avoiding mirrors altogether. I shut down. I hid. I didn't want to see myself and God forbid anybody else see me. And that hatred ran really, really deep. But what I realized is I growing up was always a healthy kid. Like I didn't carry extra weight or anything like that. I played soccer in high school and ran a little bit of track and I was super, super active. But y'all, at the age, uh, well let's say fifth grade, I think I shared this story with you guys before, in fifth grade, I remember sitting at a lunch table and it was the first memory that I have where somebody made reference to the fact that I was overweight. Uh, that I, and, and I, I really wasn't like I was a totally healthy, normal looking great, you know, whatever, just normal kid, you know, but there was somewhere somebody's voice, you know, somebody's mother or, or society's voice came into this little girl that was desperately looking, you know, to validate her own sense of self-worth. And so she had to put down others in order to do that. And, and so in fifth grade I had, I started to have this complex that my body wasn't good enough. 
I used to call my thighs ham hocks. You know, when we played soccer, I always had to get, you know, a size large um, pair of shorts. And I thought that that wasn't okay. And so I really developed this complex early, early on of body hatred and body shame. And what I heard from the women from last night was that pretty much everyone across the board had a story like that. And so if you have a story like that, you don't even have to share. Of course, you can in the comments if you want. But if you have a story that you can remember in your childhood where it was like the first memory where you go, oh, my God, like I'm not OK. It was like the awareness that you kind of move from being a child and naive to your body and you're just moving and playing and you're not even aware of it to suddenly being very aware of your body in a way that was negative. Did you guys experience this? Do you have a memory of that? If you do, give me some likes, give me some hearts. You can even put in the comments, yes, I remember exactly when that happened or it was age five or whatever. Because my experience has been that pretty much everybody has one of those stories, which is really sad, y'all. It is really sad that that happened so early. And I'm getting a lot of thumbs up and a lot of hearts, so I feel like we are on to something. And... Carissa, you said that, yeah, it was nine or 10 and you have a really clear memory. Yeah, most of us do. And if you can't think of one right now, just pause and kind of think in your mind right now. I wonder when that actually started because you don't wake up as an adult and all of a sudden start hating your thighs or something. It starts really, really early on because that is the culture and the industry that we live in. Um, I believe one of the girls shared with me in my, in my beta group she shared with me a video. I don't know if you guys have seen this. It's so f effed up. I really want to say the F word, but I'll try to keep it PG-13. Um, it was so effed up. So it was a video of these nine-year-olds and 10-year-olds making these short little YouTube videos where they said, hey guys, I just want to know, am I ugly or am I pretty? And it was this collage of videos of all these little girls putting on YouTube a video that asked if they were ugly or pretty. And they're like, I really wanna know, it's okay to be honest. And y'all, the comments that these people, you know, other little kids wrote was like heartbreaking. And this is a trend that's going on right now. And there's something inside of us as women that so desperately wants to know if we are beautiful if we are captivating. And I want to make the argument that that has been birthed out of an industry that's trying to sell us a solution. That that is not actually our fault, that that is something that has been bred into us. And I know I shared this at the beginning, but this book is incredible and it will share everything that you need to know about this. Um, but it's, it's incredibly manipulative and it will blow your mind. But we are designed, instead of hate the industry that's created this and the manipulation and the brainwashing and the propaganda that's happened, we instead turn that on ourselves as women and think we're not good enough and truly hate ourselves. And so I want to share with you this quote from Janine Roth and she says, when you love something, you wish it goodness. When you hate something, you wish to annihilate it. Change happens not by hatred, but by love. And that is a powerful quote, because if you think about hating something, truly hating it, you want to annihilate it. You either are going to want to make it go away which enters in a lot of um, body disordered behavior, you know, anorexia, bulimia, all those things. We want our bodies to go away. We don't even want to see them. We have so much hatred, we want it to go away. Or we start to self-protect. And so oftentimes we will overeat uh, to self-protect for so many different reasons. It can become a layer of protection. And if nothing else, it's just this constant war with ourselves, of berating ourselves, for beating ourselves. Hopefully, I think we think if we can hate ourselves enough, we'll end up just quieting that voice. 
And the opposite is true. But before we get into that, I want to help us get curious about this hate because we don't have patterns in our lives that aren't serving us in some way. Even negative patterns serve us in some way. Like for me, part of my journey was, like I said, I was very healthy, um, had, a, had a pretty average, like just set weight point that I just was able to keep. Like I didn't gain a lot of weight, I didn't lose a lot of weight um, until I experienced some pretty intense trauma in my life. And so I began to eat as a way of coping with this trauma and a lot of other subconscious beliefs that I had about myself and my role as a woman. And so I began to, to overeat as means to self-protect, as means to um, really survive. And so for me, that habit of, of overeating actually was serving a very important purpose, which was protection for me. Um, and so I wanna get curious uh, for you guys, just to begin to think about that hatred where, hatred, where does it stem from? What is it serving? How is it here to actually try to protect you or keep you safe? Why is the body um, in this state of constant hatred? So I wanna ask you guys a series of questions because a lot of this journey is about awareness. We cannot heal what we're not aware of. And when this hatred is just uh, accepted as part of the norm, we're not gonna do anything to change it and we're gonna keep hating our bodies. So if you can take out, it's kind of like we're gonna workshop it today, y'all. We're gonna do a little Facebook Live workshop. So take out a piece of paper or a pen, if you can, and if you don't have that, maybe you go back and, and watch this later to answer this or just think about it, but answer the following question. So, I hate my body because. Why do you hate your body? So just think about that for a second. Let's get curious. Why do you hate your body? Are there specific things that you can pick out that you hate? Why? You know, why do you hate your body? Um, Here's a, a really interesting question. So what happens is when we hate our bodies, we automatically assume that our bodies are against us, that they're not on our same team, that they're trying to destroy us, that if only my body would behave, if only my body would stop craving X, Y, Z, if only my body would change. And so we instantly think that our body is separate from us. That it's, it's another part of us and it's separate. It's an enemy. It's, it's, really, really uh, just negative. So answer the following question. I believe that my body is against me because, and if you guys wanna share in the comments, that will make this discussion so much more enjoyable and helpful to everybody else and really allow us to get into it and to get deep. So if you are brave and you wanna you know, share some vulnerability, let's get into it. So I believe that my body is against me because, why do you think that is? Why do you think your body is coming up against you? Okay, so that's the second question. The third question is, if I could fix blank about my body, I would stop hating my body. So sometimes we have these different things that we really hate about ourselves, but maybe it's ultimately like one or two things. So asking yourself, what is it that's that main issue? So if I could fix blank, I would stop hating my body. What is that one thing? I'll be honest, y'all, okay? I'm just, I mean, I have several things that I have um, in my past really, really hated that I have now come to peace about, but one of them, true vulnerability, y'all, were my boobs, okay? Like I have been contemplating over the past couple of years whether to get a boob job or not because I was 80 pounds heavier than I am now. And so when I lost all of that weight, you know, my breasts were really big and then they deflated. And I, there's an embarrassment to that that I have because somewhere in my mind, somebody told me that in order to be loved, I have to have perfect breasts. In order to be attractive to men, I have to have perfectly round, perky, symmetrical breasts. Okay, and I was reading this um, piece in the beauty myth actually about this and the whole trend of breast implants and that that was never a thing. Like if you re-round 
let's say 60 years even, nobody was going around thinking that they didn't have okay breasts. Nobody was breast comparing. Nobody was asking themselves like, oh, I might want to get surgery for this. It was just a part of our bodies that we accepted as a natural, as in their natural state. There's a lot of diversity in size and shape and perkiness and whatever. Nobody even really thought about it until the industry decided to make some money on this and glorify the perfectly round kind of pornographic breast style. And so all of a sudden they start putting in magazine these ads for, uh, you know, breast enhancements. And so now all of a sudden every woman is going, oh, are these okay? Is this, is this not good? Do I need to shift? Do they need to be bigger? Do they need to be rounder? Do they need to be perkier? And so for me, an area that I felt a lot of um, insecurity around is that, you know, a bra does a great job, but you know, sometimes you take that bra off and it's not the same. So for me, that was a big thing. So I thought, man, if I could just fix that, then I'd stop hating my body. And I could probably go on an entire list of other things outside of that. But that that's one example. If I could change this, then I would stop hating my body. So what is it for you? And again, if you guys want to share, that would be so amazing and helpful just to create this conversation. I know this is vulnerable and that's why I'm trying to demonstrate that. So totally get if you don't want to do that. But then the, the next question, the fourth question I want to ask you guys, and again, give me some hearts, give me some love. If nothing else, let me know that this is hitting home for you. The last time I loved my body was. So pause and really ask yourself that question. When was the last time you really loved your body? without shame, and this may be have to rewind all the way back into your childhood, and that's okay. But we wanna try to remember a time when we didn't hate our bodies, when we didn't think about it. Maybe the last time you felt confident. You know, when was the last time you felt confident in your body? And so that may be a really um, helpful thing to share because that's an easy one. When was the last time you felt confident? So if you guys would put that in the comment section for me, that would be awesome. When was the last time that you guys felt that. Um, Alyssa, okay, I'm gonna read your comment. So you said, I believe my body is against me because I have such a slow metabolism, found out at age five, and I've struggled with my weight all my life. I hold it well due to posture, but it's like fighting and losing battle all the time. I diet, exercise, and yet I feel stuck, just wishing my body would just work. How many of you guys, I wish we were on camera so you guys could raise your hands, how many of you guys can identify with Alyssa's story? How many of you guys feel like it is a constant battle and you're trying all these different things and you feel like nothing is working? If you feel that, give me like the uh, online hand raise with some hearts and some thumbs up because I think that's so universal. And thank you, Alyssa, for sharing that because I think a lot of people feel that way. It's like being on a hamster wheel except there's not a lot to show for it. And it robs us of being truly present ultimately. And I think that's what hating our bodies robs us of ultimately is the ability to enjoy life because we're so preoccupied with that hatred that we can't be present. And that's what my course is going to be all about is helping move past that. But we're going to cover that a little bit today. And so, you know, we have this inner critic and we have to identify that inner critic voice. What is it saying? You know, my inner critic says what, dot, dot, dot. What does it say? What is it trying to tell me? And then ultimately, uh, one of the biggest questions to ask yourself is how is this serving me? How is my body hatred serving me? Which is kind of a bizarre question to ask because logically we think to ourselves, well, body hatred's not healthy. It's not good. It's negative. It's probably not something I should be doing. But we're doing it uh, for reasons. Maybe we do it so that we can connect to other people because pretty much everybody hates their body. So what do you talk about at lunch? Probably something that looks silly that you wore the other day or that you need to go to the gym more or you talk about ways to avoid dessert. You know, that's a point of connection. Anytime there is a societal norm, it's a point of connection. So maybe body hatred for you, the benefit of it is that it allows you to relate to people easier. I had somebody um, in our body babes group who said, um, I'm nervous to be confident because of what I think that people will think about me. If I actually show up in the world as confident, that seems worse than showing up hating myself. Which again, that part doesn't make sense logically, but that makes sense here. 
So really getting into the heart, what is the benefit for you to hate your body? How is it protecting you? How is it keeping you relatable? How is it helping you stay in control? You know, if I hate my body, I will keep going to the gym. If I keep hating my body, I won't let myself go. You know, what is the benefit that you receive by hating yourself? Because there is some benefit. And I know, again, it sounds kind of weird, but there is some benefit. Um, and you guys, I love your comments. And you guys are talking about um, really connecting with each other in this. Stephanie, you're like, yeah, I can totally identify with Alyssa's story. Yeah, I really think a lot of us can. So I want to offer a different way. Because what happens is when we, we, we live in this illusion that if I could just lose some weight or if I could just fix X, Y, Z, or if I could look like her or look like her or look like her, then my life would shift. Then I would be completely different. Then this would open up. That would open up. I would be able to do X, Y, Z. We're under the illusion that if we could fix our bodies in some way, it would change our lives. And I want to bring into y'all's uh, conscious awareness that that is actually a victim mindset. That's basically saying everything is outside of myself and until this external thing shifts and changes, I can't show up in the way that I wanna show up, I can't get the job that I wanna get, I can't wear that dress that I wanna wear, I can't go to this wedding that I wanna go to. We basically, stay in that victim state where everything is outside of ourselves. And you think that the power to feel or to show up lies outside of yourself. That basically you have no choice over the matter. And that you are a victim to whatever state your body is in. That your self-worth, you're giving the power of that over to the state of your body. Uh, you're letting, ultimately, you're letting somebody else's definition of the perfect body control your life. And you're letting somebody else's body determine your happiness. Just think about that for a second. Like that's really victim mindset. And y'all, we have the power to shift this. We have the ability to be comfortable in our bodies now. It's all in how we think about it. And if we keep putting the power out to somebody else and we keep comparing ourselves and thinking that if this would shift, then I'll be happy. Then I'll show up. Then I'll go to the beach. Then I will play with my kids outside in the summer. Then I will wear X, Y, Z. We are just a victim, which I just hate because it's like so limiting and it robs us of the joy of our life. And so I think it's easy to want to put blame on something or someone. And in this case, our body. So it's my body's fault. It's my body's fault. Um, we want to hate it for the way that it dealt with the trauma. You know, we just want to hate it to kind of give ourselves the ability to be off the hook. And I want to remind us that our bodies are completely one with who we are. You know, we are so integrated in our bodies and our minds that it really is all one. We're on the same team. And so I want to share with you guys my, my top seven ways to show your body some love, y'all, because you cannot get a body you love by hating it. You cannot get a body you love by hating it. So if you want to be in a place where you love your body, ultimately nothing has to shift from today. It is, it is a choice, it is a mindset, it is a decision, and nothing has to change. And like I said, I go into a lot more depth into this in my course, but this is like the little beep, like touch point. So let's talk about these seven ways and the first way to show your body some more love, some more respect, and ultimately to build trust, because most of us have been incredibly abusive to our bodies, incredibly hateful, saying things that we would never want anybody to hear out loud. And the first is to practice some self-forgiveness. Now guys, I um, did a video 
uh, a couple weeks ago on a technique that I love to teach, which is called self-forgiveness, that I teach all of my coaching clients. So I encourage you to go back and watch that video. Um, and we'll post a link on here for you to go straight back to that. But ultimately, we want to forgive ourselves for buying into the belief and buying into the misbelief that we are broken, that we're not okay where we are, that there's something wrong with us, that we are buying into the misbelief that we have to lose weight in order to be lovable, or that we have to have a perfect six pack abs in order to be worthy to go do anything in life. There are so many ways, whether you feel like you're carrying extra weight or you feel like you have a normal sized body but you still hate it, we have to forgive the judgments and the misbeliefs that we have against our bodies. And this is a simple journaling exercise. Like I said, go back to that video, but it's a simple exercise to say, literally written out, I forgive myself for buying into the misbelief that hating my body is the only way to relate to people. I forgive myself for buying into the misbelief that unless my hair is perfectly dyed and I don't show any roots, I'll be made fun of. Or what, whatever it is for you, offering some self, um, some self forgiveness against your self judgment. So I forgive myself for judging myself as disgusting. I forgive myself for judging myself as lazy. I forgive myself for judging myself as not good enough. Whatever it is, offering some compassion and some self forgiveness is number one because we have to begin to restore that relationship with our body. And we have to offer that self forgiveness. Now, the second way to show our body some love is to offer gratitude. The quickest way out of hatred is gratitude. Think about it for a second. Think about all the incredible things that your body does for just a hot second. Just take a moment and think about waking up this morning. Think about sitting up in bed and the muscles that it took to sit up in bed. Think about those first conscious breaths that you had as you get out of bed. Think about the ability to lift your arms, to stand up tall, for the ability to have your heart beat and your, and your food digest for the ability to eliminate the waste that your body doesn't need, for your body to create energy, to see, to hear, to taste, to touch. Our bodies are incredibly amazing. And it's like giving somebody a gift of this beautiful body and being like, that shit ain't good enough. Let me just rip it up and toss it to the side. That's typically what we do to our bodies. We beat it, we berate it, we shame it. And so the quickest way out of there is to offer some gratitude for all of the ways that your body allows you to live and to breathe and to experience this world in 3D. So offer some gratitude. You can do that simply by journaling that out every morning. You can do that simply by just thinking in the morning every time you wake up, what am I grateful for as it relates to my body today? As you're going through the day, just pausing. I have a little um, thing on my phone that will remind me, body gratitude. And so I'm just going throughout my day, you know, be bopping around and I get to pause and go, okay, what am I grateful for right now? Oh my God, I'm so grateful that my body is able to metabolize X, Y, Z. I'm so grateful that I have hair on my head so that my head isn't getting sunburned right now. I'm so grateful that I can hear the birds chirping. Whatever it is, offering that gratitude. So that is the quickest way out of self-hate. All right, the third way to give yourself some, some love, your body some love, and ultimate respect. Y'all, this is kind of a funny one, but this was a game changer for me. Guys, buy some damn underwear, please, that fits. <laughs> so many women, it seems like a funny thing, but so many women walk around with old underwear and bras from like college and bras and underwear that simply don't fit. Now, that is a very clear indicator of body hatred and zero body respect because you're basically saying, I am not good enough or I don't deserve the basic needs of having undergarments that fit and that are beautiful. 
And so if it's been a long time since you have bought something that makes you feel sexy or beautiful or just simply, I don't know, just like a woman a little bit, you know? I mean, okay, truth be told, when was the last time you bought underwear that you actually enjoyed, that you felt good in? All right, if you guys are brave enough, answer in the comments. Lisa, you said you want pretty ones too, absolutely. And I know for me, when I was plus size for a really, really long time, I didn't have cute underwear. I was just like, they don't make cute bras for people who have, you know, large breasts or whatever. And I eventually got to the place where I was like, nope, I need to go find some. And so I remember going to Lane Bryant and buying some new underwear, buying a new bra, and I felt instantly better. That was just for me. That wasn't so anybody could see me. That wasn't for anybody else's pleasure. That was simply for myself. To say to myself, body, I respect you. Body, I love you. And you are worth some pretty new underwear and bras. Um, hell, get some lingerie, whatever you want. And sometimes that's too far of a stretch. So it's just the, the bare bones basics. Wear underwear that fits. Wear a bra that fits. You don't have to have it super, super tight and it's squishing everything and the wire is digging into your sides or your underwear is, you know, literally so old, it's got holes in it, it's falling apart. Think about that for a moment and give yourself permission to do that, all right? And now the fourth way to really come back to this, this place of body love and body respect is to stop the comparison game. So this is huge because we oftentimes, when we compare, like if we're walking down the street and we start seeing somebody who um, maybe is a different size or maybe the ideal of what we want, um, we will automatically assume that we know how they got those results. So for example, like if I see somebody who's thinner than I am, I instantly think, okay, they're super healthy. They're eating healthier than me. They're going to the gym more than I'm going to the gym. They're eating differently. Like they've got it all together. It's all perfect. Their life is perfect. And gosh, if I was just more like them. And we make these assumptions that are really dangerous because we don't know if those people are struggling with eating disorders. We don't know if those people are, um, fighting some, you know, disease. We don't know if those people are experiencing trauma in their lives that uh, allow them to be that size. And we don't know that they're healthy or not. Like we have no way of knowing. And so comparison always leaves us feeling like shit ultimately. Like there's never a time when you compared yourself to somebody and you thought like, oh, I feel better. Even if, even if you look at yourself and you do the comparison game and you think, okay, I look better. You know, have you ever walked into a party and the first thing you do, you're looking around and go, okay, where do I stack up? Where do I fit in here? Am I, am I down here or am I up here? And any measure of comparison or judging ultimately leaves us feeling empty and keeps us in our ego, uh, which really in the long run doesn't even feel Good. So ask yourself, when you catch yourself comparing, and this is going to happen because we all do it, it's bred into us. When you catch yourself comparing, ask yourself, how does this make me feel to compare? How does it make me feel? In this moment, I probably feel like shit, honestly. It doesn't feel good. Catch that. You know, stop the comparison game because every single person has a different body. I will never look like Heidi Klum. I do not care if I spent eight hours in the gym and starved myself. I will never look like that because my body itself is not designed to ever look like that. I can never grow another, you know, five inches. You know, I can never have her bone structure. I, it's, it's a losing battle. All I have is myself. It is right here in the way that I was born in this body and my job is to love it and to nurture it and to care for it, not to compare. So we have to stop the comparison. Now, the fifth way out of hatred and into more body is to help uh, our brains begin to see that different bodies are normal. 
This is something I've actually been doing recently that's been super helpful. Um, and I don't know if you guys already do this, I'd be curious to know, but you need to include some body diversity in your everyday existence. So, okay, for example, um, on my Instagram account, for me, I have started to uh, follow women who are all different shapes, all different sizes, who are talking about body diversity, that are talking about being healthy at every size, who are talking about the place for uh, people who are thinner, naturally people who are plus size, and just seeing that in my feed, in my Instagram feed has been incredibly helpful because I'm able to see that, oh my God, like it's not just one body type that exists out there. There are people that are talking, that are making noise, that are all different shapes and sizes. And so for me, I always want to help begin to include that body diversity in everything that I'm looking at. So for me, that includes Instagram, Facebook, uh, people that I'm listening to, and this is a big one. When you are out in public, this is not a comparison game, but when you're out in public, begin to become aware of normal bodies. Begin to become aware of everybody walking around. I live in Nashville, and so for me, you know, it's, it's a fairly uh, big city now, and so I get to see people walking around all the time. I'm out at coffee shops a lot, and I've just started to become aware of normal body, normal body, normal body, normal body, normal body and recognizing with my awareness that there are a lot of normal bodies. In fact, pretty much everybody around me is a little bit different. I was on a walk through the day and there were people that were uh, really fit. There were people with huge bellies. There were people that were pregnant. There were people that were um, short, people that were tall, people that had, you know, um, bigger hips, people that had, you know, kind of straight line. Like there was so much body diversity and I love that because I look, thought to myself, look, all of these people are out here moving their bodies, walking, running, chatting, talking, whatever. But this is a picture of the real world. So begin to open your eyes to the real world and stop only looking at magazines or whatever that are showing only one body type. Simple change, but again, it helps with the psychology that, okay, this is normal. This is normal. So if you guys are like getting this, can you give me a, a thumbs up? Give me some hearts, tell me you're getting this, and if that's actually helpful, um, let me know. Now this is a big one. Guys, the, the sixth way to begin to show your body some love and respect, y'all thank you for your thumbs up, thank you for your heart, y'all are so great, is to end body bashing. Okay guys, this is probably one of the hardest ones and one of the most important. And so body bashing is basically either publicly towards yourself, or sorry, privately towards yourself or publicly in the midst of other people or towards other people, where you look around and you make comments about your weight, you make comments about your body, you make comments about your skin, you make comments about your hair, you make comments about your, your clothes, your body part, whatever, and you bash it in some form in some way. And kind of a check for me that I have is, would I say this to my best friend? Would I say this if I had kids? Would I say this to my daughter? If the answer is no, you can be sure that you are stuck in some body bashing. And this happens so subtly all the freaking time we judge ourselves, we bash ourselves, we shame ourselves, we hate ourselves on the fly pretty much all day, every day. So start becoming aware of and catching yourself when you're saying this, and especially it's sometimes easier to hear when other people say it. So when other people begin to body bash other people, or even when other people begin to body bash themselves in your presence, to end the conversation, to begin to shift the conversation from that, that, um, just, oh, just that hatred, you know, and for yourself, you're going to find it most often when you're getting ready, when you are showering. So when you're showering, when you're getting ready, you're getting dressed, or when you pass by a mirror of some kind in your house or out in public, like, just think about this, y'all. 
Ask yourself the question, when was the last time that you body bashed yourself? Today. I'll tell you mine. I was getting ready today and I was drying my hair, getting ready for Facebook Live. And I always get ready in my bra and underwear because for me, and that's like a whoo, like huge, huge, huge step for me because before I never wanted to see my body when it was not fully clothed. So as a practice, I do that now. I get ready in my bra and underwear to continue to work on this mirror work of really loving myself and saying kind things to myself. But I was bending over, you know, kind of down here and I was brushing my teeth. Oh no, no, I was sorry. I was drying my hair. And, um, I noticed my stomach, like, you know how you can like look down, like if this is the mirror and you're like looking down all of my extra skin and fat or whatever was basically like collected in the middle of my body. And I instantly said, "Ugh, gross. Isn't there something you could do about that? Like, I wonder if you could go to the gym and ask your trainer to, to fix that for you. That was, I mean, that was like two hours ago. And I probably have done it since then. And, but I caught it. Thankfully, I caught it, which is why I can tell you the story. And I thought, oh, my God. So then I instantly looked in my eyes. And I said, I love you. You're perfect just the way you are. I just love you so much, and I love your stomach. And I just told myself, that I loved myself in that moment I shifted the conversation but here's a here's an example so like let's say if you're out in public and your friend says something like oh my god um, my thighs look so big in these jeans you know this is where you want to shift the conversation become aware of it but shift the conversation and say something like you know I've been thinking about spending more time outside this summer I really can't wait to like get out and enjoy this weather basically you want to help subtly shift the way that you communicate with your friends, that where you're sort of drawing a boundary without having to say that, you're sort of drawing a boundary that says, I'm not gonna be doing this body bashing thing anymore. Um, or maybe one of your friends says something like, oh my God, I just weighed myself this morning and I've gained so much weight, I, I have to skip bread and dessert at dinner tonight. And maybe you say something like, oh my God, speaking of dessert, I had the most delicious dessert the other night at um, Stacy's Shower and I kind of figure out what bakery that they got those cookies from where you're like, oh, it's okay to have a cookie. We're not gonna, I'm not gonna basically indulge the body bashing. So to end body bashing, you have to work on that for yourself. Shift the conversation for yourself into more self-love and ultimately shift the conversation in public. The minute that you hear that, shift it. Draw a subtle boundary and change the conversation. Don't participate. It's like the peer pressure thing, you know, don't participate. You don't have to participate. You don't have to go, oh my God, I know, me too. You know, you can say, oh my God, yes, like, and then shift it to something more positive. So in the body bashing, that's going to create a lot more self-love. Last but not least, guys, as you know, I love my affirmations, but always more affirmations. The only way to override the hatred in your mind in the years and years of practice of hating and bashing and shaming that goes on is shifting it, shifting your language and rewiring your thought patterns. And that happens through the repetition, constant repetition, repetition, repetition of affirmations. So as you're asking yourself the questions that we talked about earlier today, you know, I hate my body because, you know, I believe that my body is against me because, well, if I could fix this, then I would stop hating my body. Once you kind of get a little bit more insight into what your inner critic is saying, then you can shift into, okay, what do I really want to believe about my body? If I want to love my body more, how would I speak to it? If I spoke to my body out of love, what would I say to it? If I pretended that my body was a little girl, how would I speak to it compassionately, kindly, and lovingly. And then come up with a couple of those and then put those on repeat. Get them up on your mirrors, put them on your phone, get, in, get a routine of repeating these over and over again. You know, I respect my body. I feel good about my body. I feel that my body has some good qualities. Like you don't even have to go to I love my body, just start small. You know, I feel love for my body. I am attentive to my body's needs. I'm comfortable in my body. You know, we have to be on the lookout of where we can begin to play a new tape, where we begin to rewrite the story of body hatred 
into more of that body love. And, and y'all, this is a process. This is, this is a process. Um, but it's not your fault that you hate your body. You have been conditioned to hate it. You have been trained to hate it. Everything in your environment says your body isn't good enough. But I want to like call bullshit on that, on that system and come back into a loving relationship with our body to recognize there's nothing wrong with it. I don't care what size you're at. The first step into any healing is love, is compassion, is grace, is tenderness. And that will lead to more confidence. That will lead to feeling more body acceptance always. It starts with that compassion. And we can do that in all of these seven ways. Self-forgiveness, gratitude, really uh, giving yourself permission to b go buy some new underwear that's pretty, that fits, that we begin to stop comparison, that we include more body diversity in our social media that we follow, that we end the body bashing, and ultimately that we begin to say more affirmations to retrain our brains. It is possible to look at your body without shame. It is possible to look at your body and to lovingly adore it. It is possible no matter what size you're at. I have loved my body at all different shapes and sizes that it has gone through throughout the years. It's possible to look at it and to say, you're on my team. I love you. And we are going to get to the core of what's causing all of this hatred. And so I hope that you will join me every single week as we dive into more of this, um, as we really peel back the layers and begin um, to challenge some of these voices that we have. And of course, we'll talk about all kinds of things related to becoming fully alive. The body is just one of those pieces. But I want to just honor you for being here and for joining me today and for allowing yourself to explore and to get curious and to get a little deeper in some of these issues. And I hope that you will uh, share this, that you'll follow me on Instagram. I love doing Instagram stories. It's really fun. Um, but I will be with you guys next Wednesday, of course, same time, same place. But of course, as I always say, the purpose of life is to be grateful, to be great and to be full. Thank you guys so, so much.